Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to my channel, Eat Healthy, Get Rich, Drink Good Beer. Today I'm interviewing the founders of uh, StrikeCoin and I'm really excited to talk to them. The coin is sitting at uh, 0.005269 at the moment. It is down 24.68% due to basically the whole market in, in tatters at the moment because of the word being spread, the fear, uncertainty and division. Uh, Bitcoin is uh, at 33 and can even go down further. Just a disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. These videos are for entertainment purposes only. Also, I personally hold Strikecoin in my portfolio and this video has been sponsored by the strike team without any delay let's get into it give me a one minute pitch first about you who are you what is your track record and why should we invest in you okay i'll, I'll go first um i mean my track record in terms of the crypto market i mean i'm pre pretty new in terms of the crypto market and then again through the, the crypto market the space we're moving into in particularly the, the um one on smart chain um space is, is a new it's a new market as it is um, inherently, I'm a trader, an investor. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I met many people that are part of the Trade Strike um, community. They, a lot of them were part of my uh, investing community that I had on Discord. Um, so a lot of familiar faces there, which is great to have that community um, spirit. Cause, I mean, that's that's what Trade Strike is all about. Uh, it's I was kind of born out of the frustrations of what we as traders were dealing with at the hands of certain brokers that we won't name individually. <laughs> yeah. But really, it's just an opportunity came along to take advantage of this new technology, this new space, and, and really better better everybody's um, trading experience by doing so. What about you, Kish? <laughs> yeah, so my I guess my, my full government name is, is Kishan. Um, I'm the other co-founder and CCO. Um, so I handle the design and comm side of the business. Um, I have over 11 years industry experience, um, most of which was spent as an integral part of a small and successful startup business. So I have, I have a pretty hands-on experience of, of understanding understanding day-to-day uh, -day operations across multiple departments, primarily in, in marketing and development. You know, I, I joined Joe a few a few months ago and, you know, we kind of met on his Discord and then it grew over to a few thousand users and everyone was kind of um, dishing out the exact same frustrations. Um, and, you know, me, me and Joe are the, a very similar type of person. And, and so that's kind of how Trade Strike, Trade Strike was formed. Okay, so I think I'll stay on, on you, Kish, for the moment. Uh, so can you just explain what is uh, Strike and how different it is from Trade Strike and would strike as a follow-up question would strike be the only currency used on trade strike so trade strike is is the business itself and, and the platform that we're building um strike coin is essentially a cryptocurrency um you know we've, we refer to it as a dual purpose utility token because it's unlike most other others on the market it's its first role is to kind of help build a community of like-minded retail investors that can help shape the platform you know that they actually they do actually deserve um and we'll use that to then develop uh, deliver and pre-existing user base uh, once the platform is launched which is quite um so i don't think it's something that's that's been done before and the second purpose is that the coin itself it will be utilized as a sole currency on the platform um so you'll be able to use it in, in exchanges and, and trade fees a uh, real world example could be how bnb is to binance so moving on then to joe here uh could you just briefly explain tokenomics to the subscribers here? The tokenomics of our of our coin. I'll, 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 let me get the actual figures because I don't want to give you the uh, <laughs> wrong information. I've got, actually got them. So if not, because we've had to update them quite regularly because we have been burning and locking yeah. other <laughs> locking team wallets. So it's constantly uh, an updating thing. You know, I can't find it off the top of my head. The team tokens um, that we've locked, we've locked thirty one percent of that. Um, I know the slide I think we've got on Twitter at the moment might say twenty five percent, but um, recently. Kish has locked hundred percent of his his wallet. Again, that's just it's just to show our intent and our seriousness. We're we're not we're not in this to make money off the back of the coin. I was talking to somebody in our Telegram recently, um, and they and I said to them, I said, I don't stand, I, I don't see myself gaining financially at all by the sale of any coins at any time because it's not what it's here for. I mean, great in in the long run when Trade Strike becomes is launched, that's that's where really really we see see the future of our future um, in terms of a career and and making any money. Um, so yes, thirty one percent has been locked away. I have burned eleven percent of the total supply because we started with a billion tokens slowly but surely we're we're burning them what it is is we will have we kind of have a team wallet 
which is which I'm in control of, which is uh, one percent of the total supply, which is unlocked, and we've had to use that really as I mean, we run, we run all our competitions and our promos from it. Any burns that we have been done have been done recently have also come from that wallet. We can't go too mad with the burns on that because, obviously, as, as I've previously just said. Um, we have our time locked wallet. So if we burn through them too quickly, we'll, we'll, we won't have any tokens to run any competition. So it's kind of a staggered approach. It's yeah. not, um, it's not a lot of um, coins do have like a, a burn structure where they do it at certain times, certain, but I mean, we, what we're doing is we're kind of burning as in, as and when we see fit. When the time locks are up on other wallets, I know we've got a time locks wallet with fourteen uh, percent of the supply in that comes, which is unlocked in June. Again, that will be then can be used to top up the team wallet if needs be to run a further promos and competitions, another burn, and then a relock. Really, what we how how we run the tokenomics is that we kind of want to be as streamlined as possible. That we don't have a load of unlocked tokens, um, but that we can add to them when we need to as time locks when the time's up basically thank you uh, so next question is for kish uh, kish you already hinted you don't want to name that platforms but i think as a question i can definitely use their name to ask this question so why can't trading 212 create our own token of trading 212 why can't binance uh, use bnb to do what you guys are proposing to do and the second part of the question is what is your main competition and what is yeah. your major threat so traditional platforms um not not just restricted to the to the one that we can't name um they're, they're not really in a position to do what we're doing um the primary reason for that is you know they're dinosaurs essentially um they would need a complete overhaul to their infrastructure and the other reason is that they simply don't want to you know if, if they would have wanted to they would have had they would have already done it by now but there's too much red tape internal and external influencers that wouldn't want that to happen crypto exchanges however they are beginning to move into the space they do have the infrastructure and the financial backing to do it um, however they're essentially the same as, as the traditional platforms in, in the sense that the experience is is very disjointed and, and confusing and um, you know with it with a sheer manpower that they have they should have already implemented a fully functioning and simple to use platform but they really haven't where we're different is that we're the actual target demographic um and we know what we want and what our, what our community wants. Um, we're developing the tools that the retail investors need because it's clear that these existing corporations, they just, they're just not going to be able to do that unless they're forced. And, you know, we're not afraid of, of, of the competition either because nobody remembers who did it first. They, they'll only remember who did it the best. And at the end of the day, you know, if we can force the competition to address their poorly designed um, and, you know, poorly functioning platforms, then that's still a win for us because it's a win for the people. I really like that way of thinking, uh, Kesh. Timelines. Uh, as an investor, when can I taste the beta version or the app or the platform? What are the timelines? I mean, the timeline, I mean, we're actually updating the roadmap now. I sent Kish over a, a rough copy of the uh, version two roadmap that will be going live with the um, the version two of our website, which is, is due for launch soon. Timelines for the beta, um, original timeline, we've got it set to, I think it's it's Q3, Q2 or Q3 next year. We are hoping to get some tangible, something tangible for the community and, and to the future user to be able to experience beforehand in the shape maybe of a, of a UI demo, a user experience demo, um, so people can get a feel for the products that we're, that we're making. Hopefully that will come this year. But again, it's quite t tied in with the funding um, which I mean is, is going well, the funding side of that things, but we we want to be able to a good standard of demo out. We don't want to rush it. We want to make sure that it's it's fit for purpose and people get, get excited about it. Sure, thank you. Uh, so moving on to Kish, then I I saw an ad for developers, so I know you guys are already expanding. But what are the plans to expand the team? Yeah, so as you mentioned, we've already advertised um, for a developer that can code Solidity um, and take ownership of the token side of things. We've started uh, looking at agencies that can enable us to spread our workload. Um, and as we're community driven, we're also able to reach out to, to members um, with various skill sets themselves. And, you know, we get CVs sent to us routinely. You know, we, we know what we need and when we need it. Um, I've personally launched apps and web portals and, you know, Joe's put out a tokenization article that brilliantly highlights the processes and existing infrastructure that can be utilized to make this happen. Um, but the real, the real team expansion will occur when we secure funding from the cell of equity. And um, we're, we're currently in talks on that side of things. Um, and, you know, towards the, the launch of the platform, we'll have a, we'll be in a place with where we have back end devs, you know, front end devs, 
adequate customer support, you know, which is something a lot of these platforms are lacking. Moving on then uh, to Joe, I am an academic in my day job. So one thing I really do a lot is write grant, grant after grant after grant. It's no difference for businesses. So as a business, uh, are you guys planning to take on government grants and have you applied? Is there any success? Because most importantly, it doesn't dilute the shareholders. You can basically get government money to build something nice. So can you update us on that? When we first started really gearing up for, for funding. We were quite aggressively applying for grants. I mean, if, if, with, with government grants, I'm, sorry, I'm guessing you're aware they don't take, they don't happen overnight. Um, I mean, it's a route we're still exploring, but we have stepped off the gas a little bit on it as other potential uh, funding routes have have come to light. And I mean, we, we, we've had a, quite a lot of meetings with potential investors um, and then di like different different aspects of, of the funding. And I mean, we've just in the last couple of days, I think we've kind of chosen the route we're going to go down. OK, so just uh, sorry, just to drag on that point, uh, Joe, I, I saw that you are doing a fundraising for white bit listing. Uh, how is that going? I mean, with with the um, the, the white bit listing, it's, it's not something that we we want to put all our eggs in one basket. And as soon as we have the money, spend it because it's a lot of money. It's about sixty thousand dollars. It's it will happen. We've got, got about three we've only raised about three percent so far but that's all community community donations we will be when we have, have have more capital and have funding we will be contributing towards that part but again like i said it's not something that we are desperately trying to salvage every penny we have and put it towards purely because it's it's not as important as progress with the platform sure yep. as we expand um and we get more recognition um a larger holder base exchanges will come more and more but we've got to be quite coy with our with our finance finances and make sure that we're focusing exactly where they need to be and um, um, you know we need to see it as two different uh, different assets as well you know we're hoping that the coin the coin um can kind of take care of itself and you know the the people that um invest in the business that's handled separately another thing is you know we're actually quite ahead of of the roadmap itself i don't think white bit was actually uh, it's, it's towards the toward, towards q4 i think right yeah yeah, yeah that originally yeah I, on the um i applied for it as soon as I could purely because I was told that a lot of other coins had had to apply for it months in advance and it took a long time whereas I think we I, I got a response after a couple of days but I mean that's that was good because it just gives us more time to to raise the funds okay so I think uh next question is probably for both of you to answer again you don't have to answer it's slightly personal are you guys still doing your day jobs and uh do you guys plan to work full-time on this innovative platform um I mean I, I am full-time this is this is my full-time job now I've um recently resigned from my from my last post um at the moment i'm living i'm actually i know it's personal but i'm living off savings um and still waiting for certain stocks to come good and <laughs> hopefully can, can um can cash in a little bit there um but i mean it's for me this is this is my 100 percent it's my my full attention from as soon as i wake up well i fall asleep with the laptop on my lap you know it's, it's 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 it can't be for me part time. Somebody right now needs to be, give this hundred percent attention. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, also, it's in, it's important to reiterate that Joe is, is is working full time on this off off completely his back. You know, he's not he's not been. Um, selling any anything related to the business to fund it i'm you know i'm in a difficult situation due to my circumstances of you know i've just moved into a, a new house with a huge mortgage and i've got a second kid coming this year um but, <laughs> thank you but you know i'm putting in more hours than if i was working full-time anyway because i i work I work late into the evenings as, as does, well, I say evenings, it's more like mornings, um, as does Joe. Um, you know, I work through the weekends and the holidays um, and I'm, I'm taking time off work as, as when needed. Um, eventually the business will be in a place where we can secure additional funding that covers our salaries. Um, and, you know, I'll be able to give the work hours and, and after work hours directly to the business. But what we need to be careful of is is the platform is, is the key thing here. So um, we don't want to take away anything that we could be giving to the platform because eventually we we do see ourselves running this full time. Okay. Uh, as an investor, I would say that's called skin in the game, Joe. So I am pretty relieved as a investor who has put his own money in, in uh, strikes. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm de definitely all in, that's for sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, that's that's pretty reassuring. All right, so just changing attack a little bit. Let's talk more about the platform. As you all know, the NFTs are very hot at the moment. So is the trade strike and the strike platforms going to integrate uh, NFTs, buying and selling, and even make Hinting at some Oh, yeah, um, so, so anything that can be tokenized, um, essentially, we would like to include on the platform. 
um, yeah, I'll, I'll let Joe go more into the NFT side of things. Um, but re real estate is actually the really interesting one for me. Um, and there are some other other types of assets that we would like him to include. You got to keep them quiet for now, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still we're still in the process of, of of securing those partnerships before we can announce anything. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not gonna push you <laughs> on that, but that's good to know. Uh, Joel, you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, in, in terms of NFTs, yes, it's, it's it's an explosive market this year. I think I think I I read it that over two hundred fifty million in the first quarter traded on on, on NFTs. Um, but as Kish said, anything that's um, tokenized or is a token, um, we've, we've got NFTs as, as as one of our kind of main main brackets. We've, we're advertising that we will be including whole whole other kind of world to explore with NFTs as the market kind of rises. I mean. Again, we're talking to people with so on the NFT front that have got some some terrific ideas, and again, it's just partnerships that we, we we need to secure before we can announce publicly um, to go into more detail on that front. Um, but yeah, it's an exciting market, and it's something we're definitely going to be part of. A slightly tricky question here for I think mostly for Joe on on the technical side, but Kish, uh, please uh, step in if you want. You know, Bitcoin and Ethereum are clunky. You know, they are the first generation. Then you have second generation, right up to Cardano. Uh, you chose the Binance. Uh, blockchain to launch uh, your token. Did you guys miss a point in terms of deflationary tokenomics, in terms of rewarding the people who are hodling for a long time? I know you're burning tokens. I, I, I'm aware of all of that activity, but don't you think you guys missed a point there in terms of the token creation? In, in short, no, no. I mean, our coin or our token wouldn't wouldn't be able to, wouldn't be fit for purpose if it had um sales tax on for example um purely because later stages whilst it's being used on the platform you're instantly you people aren't going to use it when they think well i'm going to lose five percent ten percent when i sell this so it needs to be it needs to kind of be face value that's that's what you buy and that's what you sell with no with no hidden or, or no charges um i mean it's i, I understand why uh, other tokens use um use these like sales tax um because yeah it's great it's great for the holders um, that are happy to sit on sit on their tokens, but if, for us, it wasn't something that was was doable purely because uh, kind of like how BNB um, it, it doesn't have the sales tax, Bitcoin doesn't have the sales tax, just because it, it would it would limit its future use. Ish, do you want to add anything to that? Well, I mean that's that's something that um, kept kept um, being brought up, especially because um, you know we were having issues with with the with the front running. But the, the, these comments were essentially from people who are looking at the coin just as as um, a form of crypto in you know you know crypto investment um whereas i mean joe are kind of looking at it towards the future where we'd be using it on the actual platform which is why we can um, we can tweak it okay so as a corollary to that question so what is the plans to reward long-term holders is there any plans for doing that i know i know yeah, you know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean we, we've Obviously, apart from the long-term holders, we'll be making what we hope would be a very nice return in the future. We have put in our white paper that we are committed to reward the top 10% of token holders with a share of the trade strike platform in the terms of shares. In what way we do that, how we how fairly we split that, whether we do everybody, everybody in the top 10% gets the same or it's down the list of the top holders staggered down to receive different... But, that in itself will be a, a, a great reward. And again, it's, it puts the onus on our ethos of being a community driven, a community, a part of community owned platform. Probably philosophical point here. Obviously the platforms that I can't name now, the, the fees, the, the speed, especially the speed of uh, transactions. These platforms do have options of shorting shares, which is something retail investors absolutely despise. It seems as if you are putting values above anything else here. Uh, would you allow shorting of shares or options and other uh, related activities that really can discourage retail investors? So what, are, what is your position on those? I mean, personally, I think me and, me and Kish are in the same boat. We both, we're both at heart retail investors. And yeah, we, we don't, I don't like the ethics of, of hedge fund shorting stocks at all. Um, we don't have it in our immediate plans to offer it on the platform but again it's not just mining kish's decision it's a community decision if in the future retail investors want to be able to do it and they want to be able to be in the position to, to short stocks we'll have to we'll have to give them that option um but at this at this stage it's not something we're focused on or see it as a priority maybe for our own selfish reasons that we don't particularly like or agree with it i'm not saying we'll never do it because it will be based on demand if 
demands there from the people we're, we're trying to implement it. Yep. Fish, do you want to add to that? No, that that pretty much summed it up. Um, it's, it's quite lucky that me and Joe are kind of on the same wavelength in, in pretty much all of our decisions. Um, mine is the exact same. Um, I, I, I tend to hold my, my stocks um, due to belief in the company and I'll hold them down to the ground. So I, I've never personally done that. Again, it's very early days for you guys, but this question is for both of you. Describe one day one day in your uh, strike trade strike journey where you felt like yes i am feeling really good about myself i have done so much so let's start with joe one day i'll give you a few seconds to think um if, if talking about specifics i mean i keep it's, it's it's pretty much every time we take a step towards towards our goal i mean yeah there's there's been times where it's been stressful and you can feel a little bit demor demoralized but the way things have been going the last couple of weeks in particular aside from so the coin price is, is done better that's always great because it keeps the community happy but again really i think i speak for kish here as well is that our main focus is the it's delivering the platform and some of the meetings we've had the connections we've made with with people really that we could have only have dreamt of being able to talk to um, a few weeks ago, even that's what gets me really, really excited. And I'm just saying, yeah, this is happening. This is this is so close to blowing up more more than whatever really we thought was possible at the beginning. Ish, one day. Well, it's not it's not really one day. Um, you know, as Joe said, there were quite a lot of times during this project where it was it, it was pretty, it was pretty bad. But we're making steps and you know in in the crypto world we're at 5000 holders right now right so if you take a step outside of the crypto world and you speak to real investors and real real people outside of this the reactions that we're getting from them is quite mind blowing built so much in just a matter of 6 weeks that's it's quite it's very impressive to talk about and the way that they are react to it, it makes you feel a certain kind of way um and seeing the doors open this quickly helps helps us sleep better at night i'm going to ask next question to joe and it's a simple question but it's probably more for new investors and new buyers of of strike so we know that uh, uh, we can buy strike using uh, pancake swap and there's version 1 and version 2 what would be your recommendation in terms of new buyers who which version to use uh, could you comment on that yeah i mean uh, the whole the whole pancake swap um, migration to v2 for a lot of a lot of um, projects has been quite um, boring and drawn out so it, as it stands any new in investors just carry on using version version 1 i know when i know recently pancake swap puts up a a message or an e when you try to click on version one saying this would this is no longer supported you risk losing like your your money due to excessive um uh, slippage i know uh, it wasn't us directly that spoke to them about this but they have removed that message now because they understand a lot of projects are st still not migrated to v2 um, in particular, there's a lot of projects out there that have denounced ownership contracts. Uh, again, they're right at the back of the queue, it seems. But yeah, just keep using V1. I know there is, uh, we also recommended using Bogged Finance, um, which is another, they use, they kind of route through PancakeSwap, but they, they kind of, they will get you the best price that for your BNB that you're putting in or your Stripe or any other tokens that you're trading. Um, they, yeah, they route through PancakeSwap and I think, um, uh, ape finance or something ape which is kind of another another way it's just basically you can use box finance and they automatically route you or you can use v1 on pancake swap and we will update with any changes okay let's step away from strike and hit strike and ask joe and kish what are your hobbies let's start with you yeah saying right now yeah um i used to have hobbies to be fair my my, <laughs> my, my, my passion and, and and hobby has always been um well, for a long time now investing trading i can't I, I i once i have a passion for something it becomes an obsession and it's just the case with with um the DeFi um market the um uh, Binance Smart Chain, this whole market has become an obsession of mine. So I mean, at the moment, I get I very rarely get any other any other time to um, enjoy enjoy other hobbies. But the time I don't, I'm not working on this. I'm spending with my family. I've got two children and my wife. Um, so any time, any time that I'm away from my computer, which admittedly right now is not much time at all. I'll, I'll spend time go out go out and quality quality time with the family really yeah uh, I, I don't uh, I'm in the same position as Joe I don't really get to even stand up throughout the day now you know before before I did used to used to make music but I've kind of sold all my equipment um, to fund to fund uh, trading and investing professionally you know I, li I like to 
create things that people love to use. Um, you know, everything that I do is to try bring complicated things in a simple way um, for, for so it's consumable by the general public. Um, that's always been my passion, I guess, is is why I'm working so hard at Trade Strike along with Joe. I think we are officially towards the end of the meeting now. So uh, I would give you one minute to impress me in one minute, maybe why Strike or Trade Strike is, is the future, starting with Joe. Trade Strike is uh, tokenization is the future. It's the future of trading. The old setup, securitization, old platforms, the methods they're using are too heavily in influenced by intermediaries. They don't have the best interest of the retail investor at heart. Um, the kind of porting over from the stock investing world to crypto to, into, onto the blockchain, it opens up doors that were, were not there before, using liquidity pools instead of the third party um, uh, market maker. You're not going to have problems with low liquidity, orders getting cancelled, you, and then you miss the boat on an ex explosive run up of, of the stock you've had an eye on for so long. There's so many, there's geographical um, benefits, countless benefits. And the thing that will put Trade Strike above any other platform that is starting to offer tokenized stocks or any other tokenized asset is that we're building this through the eyes of, a, of, of the retail investors. And the more people that we have along and join us on this journey, greater input we'll have. So we're going to be, it will be uh, easy to use, high performing, high feature platform that everybody will love to use. I mean, again, with, with Kish's uh, design, with his uh, talent on that front, I think everybody's going to really, really take to our platform. And hopefully we'll have some tangible proof within the form of a UI demo out soon so people can start to get a feel of, of where we're going with this. Yeah. One minute. Pitch. Well, I mean, it's as simple as, you know, we're, we're in a position to uh, bring about a revolutionary change um, to the way that people invest. You know, imagine a platform whereby all, all fees are transparent, no stocks are questionably restricted without communication, um, no assets are placed on sell only, no orders are cancelled due to low liquidity. You know, if any of these issues sound familiar to you, then you should be backing Trade Strike. You know, as, as you say, you know, a couple a couple co cups of coffee or, or a night out, um, you know, we can make this happen so much quicker with the, with the support of the community. Fantastic. All right. Uh, okay, guys, uh, thank you very much for uh, this wonderful insight into Strike and Trade Strike. And I hope uh, this interview opens up uh, lots and lots of more new investors. Flooding and I just wish you both uh, all the best as a friend and also as an investor in Strike and Trade Strike. Thank you. Thank you. Great to talk to you. Bye, guys. Cheers. Bye.